After you finish your calculations in Excel, you're going to need to report your results in your typed report and then discuss what they mean. So you report your values in a results section. This should be written in full sentences only, and this is where you report your important results from the experiment. So for example, in the case of the acceleration on an incline experiment, you've got one experimental acceleration value and four theoretical acceleration values. You'd want to put all five of those in your results section with uncertainties and units and with everything rounded off correctly. And again, it should be in full sentences, not point form. So the results section is all the important numbers summarized. The last thing that goes in your typed report is your discussion section. This is where you analyze your results and say what they mean. So there's only three things that you need to analyze in your discussion, and one of them you won't be doing every week. So if there's a graph, you analyze your graph completely. But we're going to be learning about graphing next week, so I'm going to skip over this first topic. It'll be relevant next week, but it isn't this week. So what you'll start with instead is discussing the agreement of your values. So do these two numbers agree within their limits of uncertainty? In the case of the acceleration on an incline experiment, you would be comparing your one measured acceleration value to the four theoretically calculated acceleration values. So you'd have four different statements here where you'd say this experimental value did agree within its limits of uncertainty with the measured value, this next one did not agree within its limits of uncertainty, and so on. So the agreement section is simply stating whether your values agreed with the predicted values within their limits of uncertainty. And the last thing that goes in your discussion section is a precision analysis. So this is where you look at each of your calculated final values and determine what measured value affected its precision the most and what you could do to improve that measurement's precision. So for example, in the acceleration on an incline experiment, you've got one directly measured acceleration. You don't need to do a precision analysis on it because it's obvious which measurement affected it the most. However, you have four theoretically calculated acceleration values. You should do a precision analysis on each of those four. So if it's a calculated value, do a precision analysis on it.